Just that. They sold out, but only after rejecting all money offered to them. Soon they were back in the garage living off the little cash they had left from the days of Party Posse. We were doing okay at the time. I mean, me and Andy still had a little bit of money left over from the Party Posse. I mean, it would have been a lot easier though if Action wasn't such a mood. She kept saying things like, Guys, I need to eat to live. And I have my own money. I'll buy my own food if you just take off the chains. I mean, God. He didn't realize we were supporting our band with the money we were making from Walgreens. Damn Walgreens. They were doing free advertisements for the arch nemesis store, Walgreens. The weird thing is, they weren't getting paid for it, and Walgreens didn't even know about it. Walgreens! They have no pride there! No pride there. <laughs> if you don't shop there, you're a communist! Oh, you are communist? Woo! Hey, Mr. Lennon Walmart, eh? Oh, yeah! Hey, hey, Kevin, are we gonna go to Walgreens today? Oh, yeah, we are. I think so, because oh, we're yeah. patriots. We're freaking patriots. You don't go to Walgreens. You support terrorists. Yeah, you support terrorists. Patriots. And high prices. And low quality food. Oh. Woo. They completely sold out for no reason. Up next, find out what's in store for the world of rock music when Behind the Awesome returns. Life this far, but unfortunately they had got off at exit 66 when they really wanted exit 67. Jump Lee Plant Orgasm Mayhap had sold out. It wasn't until they stopped to fill up with gas right off exit 66 that they realized this. They met rock musician Emily Springsteen, who had stopped to buy a Yoo-Hoo. Hey, I had never met this group of young men before, but they had instruments and were wearing Walgreens shirts. Being the exact cross between Bruce String Springsteen and Emily Dickinson, I knew they were musicians who had sold out and lost their way. After buying my Yoo-Hoo, I stopped to talk to them. I told them that they needed to get back on the highway and go three more miles to exit 67. They had lost their way. Yoo-hoo! Chocolatey goodness. <laughs> yeah, so Emily really saved us. If it wasn't for her, we'd probably still be in the control of Walgreens. Oh, I just wish there was some way I could thank her today, you know? It's, a, it's just so hard to contact her. I can't find people like that anymore. What DJ doesn't know is that Behind the Awesome has arranged a surprise visit by Emily Springsteen. Home wrecker! Emily! Why? Despite varying thought processes on the effect of the impact of Emily Dickinson, the words were the proverbial squirt in the eye and the kick in the shin that j Pound needed. Jump Billy Palm began a new capital in their rocking saga. They were determined to work to gain to their roots, and somehow they concluded that this could be done by kicking out a majority of the band. Feeling down. Well, needless to say, at this point in our careers, uh, our band had grown slightly. We had amassed about 500 members in our group, although most of them were just hobos and beggars. Uh, but I would say that we did have some talent. There was some definite potential Woo! in our band. Uh, you know, most of the time they would just sit around and vomit, but every once in a while, one would vomit at just the right time. It, like it was beautiful. Menace. It would even make a cold hearted manatee cry. So, woo! Andy, we stop the butt rubbing. I'm trying to give an interview. Every night, butt rubbing, more butt rubbing. It's all it is in here, butt rubbing. Hey, DJ, you know that butt rubbing wasn't just all for the shower, <laughs> big boy. First to go were the very same hobos which had brought j Palm into their homes so many, many years ago. <laughs> fall, fall, fall. Well, scrabble my biscuit. It ain't them dang hobos. I always knew they'd bit up to no good when I was growing up with only the band to raise me. You can bet 
Yeah, I noticed those times when the hobos were always like, Hey, little girl, don't you just hate jumbly plant orgasm mayhaps roots? Well, so do we. That's why we're eating them for dinner. Yum, 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 yum. Good riddance, I says. Following the hobos were the preps and then the veterans of foreign wars and finally and most of all, the flamenco dancers. At the time, J. Palm faced much criticism. I mean, some called it rock suicide. Really, what is a band without hundreds of members who do nothing? But if you look at the statistics, every, every time they kicked out a prep, vet, hobo, or flamingo dancer, their record sales doubled. And if you look at the fact that their record sales started zero and went into the billions upon billions, it's a pretty amazing fact. Now there are some of you that would accuse Jay Palm of buying me off just to make up crazy numbers to make them sound great. Well, let me tell you a little something. Jay Palm will never do anything like that. They're the most loving, wonderful, kind group of individuals there ever was. And back in the day, we were kings among men. Yes, you heard me. We. Yes. Yes. I feel the beat again. I was the lingo dancer number 18. Times were once again looking up for J-Pom, but now they reached a new level, competing against bands across the nation for that solitary spot as number one. J-Pom was still the starfish, cradling a bag of jelly beans in an aquarium filled with fat kids. Things started getting tough when we were beginning to get big. Andy, DJ, and Kevy would wake me up every morning at 5 o'clock in the morning to eat what they call their even cuter making cereal. They claimed it was composed of the blood of cute foes whose death was wrought by the great fist of J-Pom. But during the day when they claimed they were having top secret rock out sessions, I would just catch them filling up boxes of cereal with hair they collected from my hairbrush. Or sometimes they would just walk up to me saying, with, saying they had a new jig. But then DJ and Kevin would just stomp around while Andy walked up to me and bite chunks of my hair off. Soon, however, all their work would quickly pay off. And before they knew it, the first concert of their world tour had begun. The concert would change everything. So, we were nervous, of course. Not nearly as nervous as those groupies we came here before the show. But anyway, so we had this great opportunity to go on a world tour. The only problem was it was with our arch enemies, the Ten Gallon Heroes. So we had a decision to make. Either we turn down the world tour, or we disappoint and have to cope with the fact that we disappointed all of our great fans who admire our ethics so deeply. So after thinking about it for a while, we gave in, sold out, and enjoyed the tour. Things looked bad for J-Pom. Would they end up selling out once more, or was it just that Lady Luck decided to bring out her official J-Pom hot pad and bake up a nice batch of cookies, with the secret ingredient being three tablespoons of awesome? Find out when Behind the Awesome returns. See, I had a secret plan the entire time that I just wanted to keep as, you know, kind of a nice little surprise for the rest of the band. See, you know that part in our, in our, you know, our most famous song, uh, the song, what's the title of it? Uh, uh, oh, that's cute, Sally, you're trying to donate your Halloween candy to Jesus? Well, you know that part where I say, he's our Lord and Savior, but you only gave him the Tootsie Rolls, maybe he thinks your flesh would taste even better? Well... I instead changed the lyric around to say, 10 gallon heroes eat poop. Yeah! <laughs> that would definitely get him. <laughs> but before Andy could even stir up some controversy with his crazy antics, something magical happened. Enter the Wankstrom. I would originally come to this concert to see my new hot star boyfriend, Steven Branson, perform their new hit single, Butt Cock John, the Carson Daily Remix. But then I got blown away by the performance from J. Palm. And then Stephen Branson's band kind of blew up. Oh well. <laughs> Apparently due to what scientists refer to as extreme rockosity caused by the general outflux of awesome passing from the gympotic biochemical pathway into the loser membrane of the 10 gallon heroes which eventually led to the rapid inflammation throughout their lower abdominal cavities. Or in other words, 
Hey, round up! Good!